With every message you send, your LLM gets just a little bit worse. And this isn't just anecdotal evidence. This has been shown in study after study after study, all of which tell the same story of context rot being the secret poison that's killing your performance. But what exactly is context rot? And more importantly, what can we actually do to mitigate it? So the idea of context rot is actually pretty simple. The more we fill up the context window of our particular AI system, AKA the longer we interact with it, the worse it performs in a given session. Now, the particular study we're looking at right now is the Chroma study. This came out this previous summer. I highly suggest you take a look at it. I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you head to this page, they will also have a link to their YouTube video. It's only like seven minutes long where they do a really good job of explaining sort of the methodology behind all the tests and what they figured out. And what they figured out is exactly what I told you. The more we shove into a particular system, the worse it performs. And this graph, and there are many of them, really drives that home. And what you're seeing here is four of the top models, Claude, GBT, Quinn, and Gemini, attempting to perform a task while they are given more and more input tokens, AKA their context window is filled up more and more and more. And as you see, their performance tanks over time. Now, these are obviously slightly older models than what we have available to us now, but this problem has not been solved and it's very alarming. Just look at this drop off, it's insane. So with this in mind, what can you, the average end user, actually do to kind of battle this issue? Well, first, we really need to understand how context windows work. And to understand context windows, we first need to have a quick conversation about tokens. Now, tokens are the currency of large language models, and context windows are the budget of every single AI model. Now, every model has a different budget. They have a different size context window. Opus for example, from Claude, has 200,000 tokens. Gemini is up to 2 million tokens, and there's models out there with even more than that. But as you'll see, bigger isn't always better. But for today's conversation, we're just gonna be pretending that we are Opus 4.5 and we have 200,000 tokens to spend. Now, what are tokens? Well, for you, all you really need to understand is that one token is equal to one word. One word is equal to one token. There's a lot of complicated math involved, but for 99% of the population, that's as much as they need to know. And to illustrate all this, we have an example conversation with Claude. And there's three things we're gonna be keeping track of. Input tokens, output tokens, and our actual context window. Okay, so three things. Now, like I said before, every word is equal to a token. So at the beginning of the conversation, when I say hi, Claude, that's two tokens. And those two tokens are first, gonna be part of that input. So right off the bat, I send two tokens. Two goes to Anthropic. It comes back with a response. Hi, how are you today? So that's, you know, six tokens. So it output six tokens. And what does that put our context window at? That puts it at eight, right? Easy enough. Eight tokens out of 200,000. We are sitting pretty. We've barely filled up any of it. Now it's time for my response. So I say, I'm doing well. Explain context windows to me eight tokens. So what is my input? Is it eight tokens? No, it's not. It's actually a lot more than that. Because when you send follow on messages past your first one, I'm not just sending this message. I'm actually sending that message plus the entire previous conversation. So it's the new message plus the entire context window. So my new input that I'm sending to it is in fact, eight plus eight, giving me an input of 16. Claude then responds with an output, which is, you know, let's just say for the sake of this example, it responded with 100 tokens. What is the output gonna be? Well, the output is its own thing. It doesn't output the entire context window back to us. So the output in this case is 100, which then brings our context window to what? Well, the context window becomes the input plus the output, which brings us to 116. See how this works? And this dynamic continues for the entire conversation. So just to illustrate this point, let's say we had 100 more messages back and forth with Claude, and let's say our context window is now up to 50,000. So up here, we have our context window. We've already filled up a quarter of it. Now, let's say I give it a new message saying, hey, can you explain context windows again? So let's just say that's six tokens. So what's the input? Input would be 50,000 plus six, all right? 
And let's say Claude comes back with a rather lengthy response. Let's say it comes back with a 5,000 token length response. What does that mean? Well, that means the output would be 5K and our total context window would in fact now be what? 55,000. So context window would now be 55. And now we filled up a little bit more. So that's how tokens in the context window works. Every input is not just your particular message. It's that message plus everything that came before it. Now, like everything, it gets a little more complicated in reality. There's things like cache memory, but as the user, this is how you have to think about it. But it's not just your back and forth messages that fill up the window. Here's an example of an actual context window from Claude Code itself. And you will see that messages, right, those back and forth only takes up one portion of the entire window. What else goes in there? Well, you have things like system prompts and tools and very importantly, MCP tools. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but MCP tools can be huge and take up a huge portion of your context window. So if we went back to this conversation, in reality, you know, did we have just two input tokens here at the beginning? No, actually, we had a whole bunch of stuff that was already there. You know, we had the system prompt, we had system tools. So your first message, in fact, wasn't two tokens, it was probably 5,000 in two tokens. So there's a lot of things that are fighting to grab the context window. Now let's bring this back to the idea of context rot. We have all these tools, all these messages fighting for real estate in our context window. Yet at the same time, past a certain point, our LLM's effectiveness is going to drop significantly. There's no exact number. It's roughly rule of thumb, 100,000, 120,000 tokens. And that doesn't really change whether they have a 2 million context window or a 200,000 context window, which is why the size of the window doesn't really matter. Because again, past this point, 100, 120, there's no exact number. It just stops working as well. So those are the things we have in mind. That's context rot. Context rot is saying, hey, once we get past this number, right? Once we start filling it past here, well, you're not gonna do so good. So at this point, we understand what context rot is, right? The effectiveness going down over time. And we have a pretty good idea of how this window fills up, right? Our messages, our prompts, our tools, how inputs and outputs work. Now is the important part, which is like, okay, what the heck do we do about this? How can we actually stay in this, you know, sort of Goldilocks zone while at the same time, still giving our system enough context for it to actually complete tasks. Now, the first and most important weapon that you can employ in your battle against context rot is task management. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, giving the large language model, giving Claude code, giving whatever discrete specific tasks that it needs to execute not being vague, not telling it, hey, I want you to create this SaaS product that's you know, a project management uh, tool for content creators. That's too much, right? That's too much context and too many ideas it needs to hold in its tiny little context window brain to actually execute things properly. Instead, we need to take your idea and break it down into its smallest parts possible and then have it execute those specific tasks. Now, what does that look like when we're talking about agentic coding tools like Claude Code? Well, that means having a proper PRD. That means not showing up with just an idea and letting it go to work. That means having your idea, taking it into plan mode and having a significant back and forth till you break it down into its discrete pieces. That's what we're looking at here, right? It was a PRD, a Kanban board for, board for video creators. I kind of talked about this in my previous video. And what do you see? Well, you have the idea right? Kanban board for video creators. But then we break it down into its individual specific tasks it needs to do. Because if I tell it, hey, set up the board, it's too much, right? We want to get as small as possible. Think of, you know, again, oh, I want to build a website. No, I want to build a landing page. No, I want to build a, a contact form. No, I want to build the specific logic that makes sure the email they put in is legit, right? break it down to its smallest individual piece. And by doing so, it will use less context to execute the task. Now, the second weapon we have at our disposal is session management. When talking about a chatbot, let's imagine I've been talking with Claude for hours and hours in the same exact chat. Well, session management means asking Claude, hey, create a summary of everything I've talked about so I can head to a new chat. And then I would just open up a new window, open up a new chat, dump that summary in. And now it kind of knows what I've been talking about, but we have 
all the context window available to again, which means we'll get better outputs. Now, Claude Code and a lot of coding tools take this same approach with the idea of an auto compact feature. So you'll see here, Claude Code and their attempt to fight context rot has the auto compact feature. That means as we fill up all these tokens, once I hit, you know, the 150, 145, 155 uh, token number, it's then going to start a new session. And it's going to ask Claude in this session to say, hey, create a summary of everything we've done so it can go into a new session with a new window with an idea of where we're at. So we don't just start from scratch. Now we can also do this manually inside of Claude code by either asking for the summary ourselves or just doing, you know, slash clear and starting a new session again. And frankly, those two ideas alone, having specific tasks for your AI to accomplish in one session and actively managing the sessions themselves is pretty much a 90% solution. And when we look at things like the Ralph loop or the GSD framework, you know, two scaffolding sort of mechanisms around agentic coding, that's exactly what these things do, right? Let's take the Ralph loop, for example. What does it do? It takes your PRD, it takes a specific tasks, and then it attacks it one task at a time and starts a new session every single attempt. GSD kind of does the same thing. It takes your idea, turns into a PRD, breaks the PRD into atomic tasks and launches sub-agents and sub-agents have their own context window to again complete said tasks. So what are both of these things doing, right? They're managing context via new sessions or sub-agents, and they're giving AI only one specific task to complete in any one session. What does that mean? It means less context rot because it's gonna be using less context overall to complete the problems, therefore giving you better outputs. And with that in mind, I would highly suggest checking out the Ralph GitHub and the GSD GitHub to get a better idea of how these systems work. I'll also link videos in the description where I talk about both of them so you can kind of see these models in action. And the very last point I will make on all this has to do with MCPs. Obviously, when MCPs kind of came onto the scene a year ago, everyone was going nuts. Everyone wanted to throw 30 MCPs and create agents with them. Understand, MCPs are super, super heavy. Anthropic themselves came out with this article November 4th, pretty much saying MCPs are way, are way too bloated and there's other ways we can actually sort of use their functionality. So this isn't to say never use MCPs. This is saying use MCPs sparingly and don't just have them on within your session if you don't need them. So that's where I'm gonna leave you. Make sure to check out the GSD video if you wanna see these context mitigation techniques in action. And as always, let me know what you thought about it. Check out the free school for tons of free AI resources and I'll see you around.